In this video, I will talk about how to do count data models and I will give you a simple example. Before you view this uh, video, please make sure that you have watched the lecture on count data models from my YouTube channel. So we will do the Poisson, the negative binomial model, and hurdle or truncated models, and also zero inflated models. We would like to study the factors that influence the number of doctor's visits, and the data for this example comes from the U.S. Medical Expenditure Panel Survey for 2003. For a dependent variable, we have a count uh, data variable, the number of doctor's visits. And for independent variables, we would have um, whether or not the individual has private insurance, whether they have uh, Medicaid insurance, their age, and number of years of education. We can summarize the data by looking at the number of doctor visits, or ROI, the dependent variable, and we have 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, and so on, and this is the percent frequency in the data. So we have 11% zeros, 9% uh, ones, and so on, and you can see that those, those percentages go down as the numbers increase. So this is how uh, count data uh, dependent variable looks like. On this slide, I have already uh, estimated the different models and I have put them here to summarize uh, the Poisson and negative binomial model coefficients and the marginal effects. The stars here in this table denotes a statistical significance and I have not put here standard errors or statistics or any other R squared or so on, but you should include that in your paper. So the first model that we would consider right here is the Poisson model. These are the coefficients and these are the marginal effects from the Poisson model. And these are the coefficients from the binomial model and these are the marginal effects from the binomial models. So how do we interpret coefficients? If we look at this this uh, variable here, whether or not a person has a private insurance, those that do have private insurance, they're expected to have a 15% higher uh, number of doctor's visits or a 16% higher number of doctor's visits depending on which model we use. They're also expected to have 1.04 additional doctor's visits or 1.08 additional doctor's visits depending on which model that we use. That's how you interpret those coefficients. Remember that the binomial, the negative binomial model also includes an estimate of alpha, the over dispersion parameter, and this is this number here, 0.81, and this is statistically significant. Uh, significantly different than zero, which means that we should use the negative binomial model instead of the Poisson model because there is over dispersion in the data. So in a, in a paper, you should go ahead and report, report the numbers here rather than here. But even though there is over dispersion in the data, I please take a look at how close these numbers are. If you compare the Poisson coefficients to these coefficients, they're very, very close. And the marginal effects, likewise, are very close. So even though you know we're, we have to use the negative binomial models, it almost gives you the same prediction. On the next slide here, I have estimated models, which are the hurdle models, the two-step models also called truncated Poisson and negative binomial models, and these are the coefficients in the marginal effects. So recall from the lecture that in the first step you have a binary process uh, saying whether or not you have zero as the outcome or the positive outcome. We can estimate this with the logit, with the logit model. So this logit model is a zero, one dependent variable, whether or not the person has zero or positive outcome for the, for the, Poisson, uh, for the Poisson distribution. 
So the way to interpret those results are as a normal logit model. Those that have private insurance, have Medicaid, have a higher age or higher education are more likely to have positive number of doctor's visits. Now, these models here, the four models that we have on this side, they are truncated models in, in a sense that the zeros are not there. We only estimate one, two, three, four, and so on. So when you interpret the coefficients and the marginal effects here, you would need to say, for those individuals that have positive number of doctor's visits, then we have um, those that have private insurance, for example, they're 9% more likely, uh, they, they, ha um, they have 9% higher number of doctor's visits, according to the truncated Poisson model, and um, they have 10% um, higher number of doctor's visits. Looking at the marginal effect, they would have 0.67 additional visits or 0.71 additional number of doctor's visits. So that's how you interpret those numbers. And again, the key thing to say here is for individuals with positive numbers, because they're zero truncated, they don't have the zeros in there. Now, you can compare those two-step models here and the one step that I showed you on the previous slide, and you can look at those effects uh, that we have here, and they are very, very similar. So, again, this doesn't always have to be the case, but it is the case here in, this, in, in, in our example. Another thing that you can consider here is that for some reason, I just put the same uh, independent variable for the binary process as well as the positive model here. That also does not have to be the case. For example, whether or not you have positive number of doctor's visits, these may be di completely different variables than those, and that's okay. And that's why a lot of people prefer those two-step model or truncated models instead of the one-step models where the decision of zero or positive and the number for the positive are bundled into one. But here we have very, very similar results. So again, you don't have to have the same variables. On this slide here, I have the zero inflated Poisson and negative binomial model, the coefficients and the marginal effect. And these three columns are for the um, Poisson-related models, and these are for the zero. Uh, these are for the bi uh, negative binomial models on this side. One thing that really surprised me is the coefficients that we have on the inflated models. Now, these are the binary models of whether or not they're zero or or a positive number. But the numbers here, these are almost opposite of what, what we had um, from before from the logit models. And these are also of, of, the, of different magnitudes. So it's, it was a little bit surprising to me. Um, once you look at the zero inflated ones, the way to interpret these is that, remember now you can have zeros in two different ways with these zero inflated. It could come from whether or not you, you um, from the binary process, you have zero or positive, or you could come from the second step process where you're inclined to go to the doctor, but you may actually happen to also have zero visits. So in the second step here, unlike with the truncated models, you could have zeros in the second, in the second step. So the way to interpret those coefficients is that for individuals who are inclined to go to the doctor, those that have private insurance are 9%, uh, they have 9% higher number of doctor's visits or 10% um, higher number of doctor's visits or 1.05 or close to one additional number of doctor's visits. So I'm going to have to change this number here to be 0.95.
So that's that's how you interpret those results. Another thing to notice in those results is that um, there are a little bit higher number of additional doctor's visits. Those numbers right here are a little bit higher than if we use the truncated models. Um, but that, that doesn't necessarily have to be the case. It just happened to be the case um, in, in, um, in our example. So the first point I already made um, and the second point I already made uh, and actually the third point I already made that uh, we don't have to have the same variables in the binary models, the zero versus the positive and the truncated or zero inflated second step models. So keep that in mind that could be uh, that you could you could do something differently for the binary model and for the second step model in your own study. So we're done with the example and now let's go ahead and look at the different uh, programs that would estimate these models.